So today we will actually uh, go through the major part of the carbon crusade uh, development, uh, the formula development. And I have prepared the worksheet simply because when I let you work on the problem, even if you don't get the chance to finish everything, please just start thinking. And that makes you, it makes it easier for you to retain the material uh, once you actually see what I'm doing. Why isn't this projected? Power is on. So uh, you can actually start looking at the worksheet. And basically, the first thing that you see is this picture. Come on, picture. The picture of the sample of a porous medium that has some hypothetical tortuous tubes through it. Come on. Really? There we go. Maybe. Fighting with the projector here every time. There we go. Here it is. So I will actually just quite literally Google some online materials. So just to actually visualize for you how things look like within the porous medium. It is obvious that as I'm going through a porous medium, I'm never really going in a straight line. Okay? So if I'm going through a sphere packing, I gotta go around those spheres that have obvious curvature to them. So my path through the porous medium will likely be very torturous. Okay? So just to actually show you interconnectivity of these porous media. So this is a cross section of a Berea sandstone from microtomography image. And this is approximately whatever is 256 times 5 microns. Okay, so that's a couple of millimeters here on the side. And actually these lines that you see on the right photo are basically, if a fluid comes in, it basically goes through this network and this, this is how basically skeleton of pathways looks like through a sandstone, okay? So it's very torturous. So one of the base models of porous media that uh, has that, there is, the, is the one that I drew on this, um, on this example is of tortures too. Now, one thing that is simplified in this particular model is that those tubes do not interconnect. So we are not handling how they interconnect. They are not a network uh, of channels that talk to each other. They're simply tortuous channels across. So let's actually, as a first example, let's assume that this is, so if my phi is my for porosity, okay, so I will assume that this phi is porosity of the channel. And I will assume that when I say porosity, basically when I cut across this sample, I will always see in two dimensions the same porosity. Okay. So let's look at the sum of the, so if my area, I will define L as a sample length, area as the entire area of a side, here, so you can start writing down. So this area is the entire side area of cube side. So L is simply my sample length. And phi is porosity. And it's assumed representative of all of the sides. And delta P is the pressure difference across the sample. Excuse me for suddenly writing, writing in subscript.
And for the tortuous channel, we know that it's some length that is larger than the sample length because I got to go up and down. And actually, I measure these things using image analysis. So from that image of the rear sensor that I tell you, you will see that on average, you will actually be 1.8 to 2 times more. So your length that you travel will be 1.8 to 2 times the length of the sample itself. So somewhere there, but uh, depends, of course, on the medium, how torches you're going to get. In a sphere packing, which is not so much cemented as a sandstone sample is, it's going to be about, uh, around 1.4, 1.5. Okay. So those are certain numbers that you're going to get. And I'm going to assume some sort of average radius. So this is my length of the torches channel. And R it's, is some assumed radius of, a, and I'm going to call it representative channel. And we're going to figure out what that R is at the end. But for now, we're just mentioning it as R. So basically, this assumption of the flow through the porous medium is flow through this tortuous representative channel across, and we are going to equate the two at the end of this derivation to actually figure out what should be my permeability of the sample. So how about you actually start filling things in a little on your own? So if these, I basically introduced all of the definitions of things that we're going to assume here, so please fill in what is the sample area open to the flow. So remember that A is entire area of the side, and of course not all of it is open to the flow. Some of it is solid. And then remind yourself what is Darcy velocity. Darcy always measured, is measured for the entire face of the sample without necessarily knowing what this is, and we will de define interstitial velocity as follows, so basically Q dividing by this area that is open to the flow that you have found right here. So on the left side, we're building things for this entire sample, which I'm calling REV scale. Everybody knows what REV is? Representative elementary volume. So that's what I'm assuming every time I'm having some, whenever I'm talking about upscale properties, like porosity, permeability, there is an inherent assumption that the sample I'm looking at is representative of whatever it is that I want to describe. So if I have some block within my reservoir, for instance, I'm discretizing my reservoir, right? and I will have individual blocks as part of that discretization. They could be a couple of feet on a side. Okay? I'm assuming that when I'm describing permeability of that sample, it's representative for that entire block. So if I'm in analyzing some very small sub portions, so I take a sample from that block or something like that, and I go measure things, again, there's inherent assumption that whatever I measure on the small sample is representative of the entire block. Now, there's always somewhere a limit. What is the representative size? So if I, as I'm going to, I take a large block, right? I'm probably that large block is rather representative. Then I take a half smaller block, I'm still thinking if I'm on these sizes, I should be good. Then I take half smaller. At some point in getting smaller, I'm going to stop being representative if, if I actually measure porosity, for instance. Okay? That porosity will start wildly fluctuating. Down to, oh, if you saw that image that I showed you, right? If your blocks are very small, like just a couple of microns, 
then sometimes you're going to hit solid and you're going to be completely within solid, so your porosity is zero, or you're going to hit pore and you're going to be completely within the pore when you have a block only a few microns on the side and you're going to be completely within the pore. So your porosity is either zero or one, obviously by lift fluctuating the way you remember it. So somewhere as you are increasing, like, there is a line where you kind of be, start being represented. And typically in sandstones or sphere packings, let's say that you, in that, that sphere pack that I actually have sh showed you, I, I came with a printed sphere pack last time around. So basically that's actually fairly representative. I need at least five or so grains on a side to start becoming, seeing average uh, properties that are not fluctuating as much. So when I'm looking at the individual pore, that is just like a couple of spheres on a side that's typically not representative. That's something that is a smaller unit within my, uh, within my medium, but it's not necessarily representative. So here we are assuming we have a representative elementary volume, and typically we call that REB scale. Okay? So fill in what you think is time here. And then once we're done with this side, Fill in the rest of these boxes here. So if I just had a channel, remind yourself, what is an average, average velocity? So that's something from 2.2, 2.3, somewhere there. The chapter in your BSL. So remind yourself, what is a average velocity for a cylindrical tube of radius r and this length lt oh, sure. there are two left so. Q in this formula is volumetric flux. Uppercase Q is volumetric flux. A is area, so Q is linear flux, right? 